All righty. Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. Another opportunity for us to come in here and learn of the word of truth as given to us by the most high God. All honor goes to the father through the son whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is of works. Uh, I'm sorry. It is of faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the most high. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching in on the camera, the ones that haven't even got here, we don't even know who they are. But no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Right? Last week, what did we talk about? Uh, Brother T, what did we talk about last week? Uh, we did, uh, I don't think we was on a narrative for that long last week. We was, uh, uh, let's see, we were talking about Jeremiah. Uh, yeah. We did, we finished, uh, we were in a, still in the middle of Second Chronicles 36 about mm -hmm. my man's, uh, I forget his name, uh, Jehoiah Chin, I think, is the king. No, we ain't got the Jehoiah Chin yet. We on Jehoiah Kim. All right, so we talked a little bit about Jehoiakim, and you remember his name, his name was Eliakim, <clears throat> right? But Babylon came, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Egypt, uh, yeah, Egypt came and took uh, Jehoahaz and then put Eliakim on, as a king, and he changed his name to Jehoiakim, right? He made him change his name. So then Jehoiakim then became king, and... um. Uh, and you know, started to rule and all that. Then eventually, we read last week that Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, came in and he started to, you know, what I'm saying, kind of meddle with things and kind of mess some stuff up for him. Um, and eventually, Jehoiakim ended up being taken too, right? So that's kind of what we looked at. But all this time, you have to kind of like it's one thing we haven't really we've been talking about the prophets a little bit, but we haven't really spent a lot of time really trying to understand how many prophets like look at all these prophets like all these is prophets right you know what i'm saying these are all different prophets so these are all the prophets that's in this time frame so we in this time frame right here you know what i'm saying you got jehoahaz you got jehoiakim you know what i'm saying this is the time frame so you got uh jeremiah joel habakkuk zephaniah you know what i'm saying uh uh daniel's about to pop up too like all this stuff is happening all at the same time so you just got a bunch of prophets that's telling you. And when you think prophets, you got to think of somebody telling you like, yo, y'all about to die. X, Y, and Z is about to happen. Repent. Turn from your sin. This stuff about to go down. He about to destroy all this stuff. Like everybody warning them. And sometimes it's cryptic. Sometimes it's pretty straightforward, right? When I say cryptic, it's like sometimes you don't really understand what he's saying. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes it's pretty straightforward. But people are ignoring these things. You know what I'm saying? Like, like Nebuchadnezzar, you had you had people telling people that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, you had people telling them that, that he was coming. Like, yo, he's coming and he's going to be a rough one. Right. That's pretty much what all. Uh, grab grab real quick. Grab. Uh, grab Jeremiah chapter 19. It's Jeremiah chapter 19. Give me verse one. Right, because we can't really get through. Jehoiakim until we talk about Jeremiah. Jeremiah was talking to Jehoiakim. Right? He was talking to Josiah too. He was talking to all them boy, but he was talking to Jehoiakim. So let's get to uh Jeremiah chapter 19. We're gonna start at verse 1. We're gonna read 19 and 20. The 20, you know what I'm saying? Jeremiah gonna get a little emo in 20. You know what I'm saying? Back in back in our day, we used to call it emo. You know what I'm saying? But he's gonna get a little sad in 20. You know what I'm saying? This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 1. That was peace, Sister Chris. Shabbat Shalom. Brother T, you there? I'm at Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 1. Thus says Yahuwah. Go and get a potter's earthen bottle and take the ancients of the people and of the ancients of the priests. When he said the ancients of the people, he talking about the old folk. He said, he said, go ahead and go get a, a earthen vessel and bring some old folks with you. Go ahead. Keep going. And go forth into the valley of the son of Hinnom, 
which is mm -hmm. by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee, and say, Hear the words of Yahuwah, O kings of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which whosoever heareth his ears shall tingle. Because right, so he, this is Jeremiah telling the people, look, I'm going to bring evil. Y'all say he's going to bring evil upon this place. It's going to be so bad. Whenever you hear it, your ears going to darn tingle. You'll be sitting there like, ooh, that's going to happen. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burnt incense in, in it unto other gods, whom neither they nor their fathers have known, mm -hmm. nor the kings of Judah, and they have filled this place with the blood of innocence. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings brings unto Baal, which I commanded mm -hmm. not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. Therefore, behold, the days come, says Yahuwah, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley mm -hmm. of slaughter. And I will make void, and I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place. And I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies, and by the hands of them that seek their lives. And their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And mm -hmm. I will make this city desolate and a hissing. Everyone that passes thereby shall be astonished and hissing. Right? He said, I'm going to tear this place up so mm -hmm. much that every time somebody pass by it, they're going to be looking like, oh, whoa, what happened here? That's what he mean by astonished. They're going to be sitting there like surprised, like, hey, who did all this? You know what I'm saying? Didn't this used to be a great city? Like, sheesh. What do you think they over there doing now? They over there digging stuff up every time I got I follow a page that every time they dig something up, they be, you know, what I'm saying celebrating it and putting it on the page. They be digging stuff up. This is an ancient artifact of ancient Israel. Wow. This used to be a great city. Right. That's what they be doing right now. And then you got all these people over there. They over there fighting over our land. Just like the book said they would. Right. Keep going. Make a darn fool out of themselves. They crying about whose land is it? You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm Israeli. It's my land. But I'm Palestine or Palestinian. It's my land. Like stuff, both of y'all. You know what I'm saying? Most of God let me. I'll come over there and take it from both of y'all right now. You know what I'm He's lucky he won't let me. He'll let us one day. He's going to let somebody do it. It ain't going to be me. You know what I'm saying? Got too much blood on my hand. You know what I'm saying? What do you tell David? He said, David, you know what I'm saying? David got too much blood on his hand. That's what happened when you sin. A lot of people don't realize. A Christian taught me about David. This is what a Christian said. The Christian, uh, a Christian, a Christian told me, he said, uh, he said, David was, he is like, David was a king of war. So he couldn't build the temple. Guess who he had to let build? Solomon, because he was a king of peace. I was like, oh. It made sense then, though. So I was like, you right, Solomon was a king. Of, I was, my Christians, I believed every word of it. I'm like, oh, that's why he told David, you a man of war, you too bloody to build my temple. Because you would been in too many wars. You didn't kill too many people. But in reality, that's not what he was talking about. David had innocent blood on his hands. Right? David killed an innocent man so he could sleep with his wife. That, that's, that's a different situation. Most like God said, that's the blood that's on your hands. Right? You got innocent blood on your hands that you ain't paid for. You were supposed to die for that. So he told him, he was like, for that reason, you can't build my temple. I'm going to let your son do it. People don't realize Solomon went to war too. When Solomon, hey, Brother T, when Solomon first came in, what did he do? What was the first thing Solomon started doing when he came in? He conquered all of the neighboring lands, made them pay and, tribute. And what else did he do? Built the temple. Now, nah, before the temple, he had to clean some stuff up before the temple. Yeah, yeah, he, he, got, rid of, he got rid of all of the, he got rid of Joab and everybody that, that wronged his pops. He got rid of everybody that had Everybody blood. his daddy didn't get? He came back and got him. Like, oh, you mess with my daddy? Bow, you done. Oh, you did too? Bow, you done. You, I'm going to give you a chance. Go sit your butt over there. If I catch you outside of your house, I'm going to kill you. Oh, you left you out. Bow, you done. He got him all. That's the first thing he did. They talked to me. Chris is going to tell me he is, a, he is a king of peace. Why don't y'all stop that darn line? If you tell the truth about the book, it make more sense. A man like me, the book makes sense when I understand it. The book makes sense when you teach it exactly how it's written. It don't make sense when these Christian telling me God love everything you do. How that supposed to make sense to somebody like me? When I look at the world and I see that ain't how the world works.
Then I read the book and I see that ain't how the book work either. You can't tell me no mess. You know what I'm saying? No, you got to tell me the truth. You tell me the truth, it all work out. Keep going. Let's see what the book say. <laughs> and, I will, and I will make this city desolate and a hissing. Everyone that pass by shall be astonished and hiss because of the plagues thereof. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters. And they shall eat everyone the flesh of his friend in the siege of straightness and straightness where with their enemies and they that seek their lives shall smit, shall straighten them. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee and shall say unto them, thus says you <clears throat> of hosts, even so will I break this people in this city as one breaketh a potter vessel that cannot be made whole again. And they shall bury them in Tophet so there be no place to bury. This will I do unto this place, says Yahuwah, and to the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burnt incense unto the host of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto the other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, where the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he mm -hmm. stood in the court of Yahuwah's house. And said to all the people, Thus says Yahuwah of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks, that they might not hear my words. Right. Yeah. When the book say harden their necks, it's giving you imagery of somebody that's like you think about like an animal, like you riding a horse. You know what I'm saying? You ever seen a horse? You know what I'm saying? You riding a horse or or a uh uh what's someone with the hump on the that uh, camel, you know what I'm saying? You yeah. riding a horse or a camel. You know what I'm saying? If you ever seen somebody ride on them, they ride them like this, right? And they're going like that. And then what they do is they pull on one side, you know what I'm saying? And it, it yanks the, the neck of the horse to the right, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to pull the right, and all of a sudden the horse, the, the horse head yanked that way. What happened, what happened when the horse head yanked that way? They start going that way, right? So you start going, then you yank their head the other way. So what you think will happen, you got you a stiff neck horse. You riding too, going boom, fast. Somebody make a cut on you, yink! Oh, you got to change him. Click. Oh, boy, I told you. And you can't pull his neck because his neck too darn stiff. That's what he's saying we like. Like, man, I'm trying to get you. We chasing him. We, I'm trying to get you to turn. Get your darn neck. And your neck darn strong. So it's like, I can't even get you to turn. That's the imagery that he put on us. Like, I'm trying to get y'all to turn to see, go the right direction. And y'all strong darn neck still trying to go straight still. It's a cliff right there. Right? I'm trying to help you out. It's a cliff right there. If we all going to die, if you don't turn this way, right? But we ain't doing it. That's how you look at us. Like, we 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 not doing that. Keep going. Uh, that's the end of the chapter. <clears throat> this is uh, chapter 20. This mm -hmm. is uh, uh, Jeremiah chapter 20. Give me verse 1. All right, so I just want y'all to see. <clears throat> this is the stuff he talking. He telling us, this don't feel good, right? When we got our own nation, we our own people, and you got this guy that just pop up telling you everybody about to die. This stuff, he about to kill all it. He about to bring this thing. People going to walk by, and their ears going to tingle when they hear about what's going to happen. People going to see after it's done, and they going to be looking like, this used to be a great place. You think we like hearing this? We got our own stuff. My house right here. My whole family live here. Everybody good, right? And you sitting here telling me all this about to be gone. You think that feel good to hear? No, nah, but watch how they treat them. Now, Pasher, <clears throat> the son of Ember, the priest, who was also chief governor in the house of Yahuwah, heard that mm -hmm. Jeremiah... So he, so he has some authority. He's the chief governor. That means he runs stuff, right? His name is Pasher. So Pasher, he runs some things. What do he do now? He heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then mm -hmm. So he heard about what Jeremiah had been talking. Let's hear about it. Let's see what he say. Then Pasher smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin. They said he smote him? Yeah. What'd that mean? And we punched him in the face. He looked at him. You talking this mad? They, we don't like that. This is our home. I got me some authority. You talking about the temple that I helped run. Who are you talking to, young boy? Because you got Jeremiah as a young boy. These are the old heads he talking to. Say, look, who are you talking to? Punch his mouth. Bah! Sit your butt. And then they put him where? In the stocks. That's like, you know what I'm saying? Put him in, you know what I'm saying? Like a little jail. You know what I'm saying? Like, sit your butt down. Why don't you sit down and take some time think about what you're talking about over here? We know God. In their mind, we know God too, boy. Like, who do you think you are? 
You running up telling me we going to die. Babylon going to take us over. What? Do you know who we are? Babylon would never. You know what I'm saying? That's how we talking. Right? Watch this. Keep going. They put him in the stocks that was in the high gate of Benjamin, which was by the house of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. It came to pass on the morrow that Pasher brought forth Jeremiah out of the stocks. He then said, All right, so he brought him out like, yeah, you, you learned your lesson yet? Watch this. And Jeremiah said unto him, Yahuwah has not called thy name, Pasher, but Magor Mishabi. For thus says Yahuwah, behold, I will make thee a terror of, to thyself and to all thy friends, and they shall fall by the sword of their enemies, and thine mm -hmm. eyes shall behold it. And I will give it all. I will give all Judah unto the hand of the king of Babylon. He shall carry them away captive into Babylon and shall slay them with the sword. Moreover, I will deliver all the strength of this city and all the labors thereof and all the precious things thereof and all the treasures of the kings of Judah will I give to the hand of their enemies, which shall spoil them and take them and carry them to Babylon. And that all right. Was so he told him he's about to let them out because he's like, OK, you've been sitting down for a little while. Let me go ahead and let you out now. You probably learned your lesson, right? As soon as he started letting Jeremiah out, yo, 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 your name ain't Pasher no more, right? Your name now, your name mean you a terror to yourself because you know what's about to happen? You and your boys, all y'all about to get killed. The king of Babylon about to come here and this whole land about to be given to him. He talking big, crazy stuff to him. So now Pasher got to deal with that. Let's see. <clears throat> and thou, Pasher, and all that dwell in thine house, shall go into captivity and you shall come to Babylon and there you shall die. And shall right, imagine, dead. look, imagine how this sound though. <laughs> I, 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 we have to be able to put ourselves in these positions because I'm telling y'all, most our God let, might let us live to see some of this crazy stuff, right? So we got to put ourselves in this position, right? This is how I look. I, we putting ourselves in pasture position. I don't believe what this guy is saying, right? He talking, he running his mouth. I don't believe him. And it's demoralizing. It make us feel like we losers. It make us feel like it make us feel like we gonna lose a war to another nation, one of these Gentile nations that God don't even mess with. God do mess with us. He don't mess with them. Why in the world would they beat us in a war? Right? That's how Pasher thinking about it. So then Jeremiah talking his his mess. Pasher got the authority to do whatever he want to him. Pasher think he taking it easy on him. I'm showing I'm showing Jeremiah mercy. I'm just gonna put you in your darn mouth once. Sit your butt down and go sit in the stocks. All right, give him a little time. Yeah, I hope you learned your lesson, boy. You come out. Jeremiah popped right out. Yeah, okay. Well, your name, Pasher, not no more. Not no more. Now, you know what your name is? You a terror to yourself. Because King Babylon going to come. He going to kill you. 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 He going to kill. So now I feel passive aggressive. Pasher, Pasher looking at, oh, now you just saying, now you just talking to me. Your whole family about to get it. This, that, another, da, da, da. Y'all all going to captivity. He going to make y'all slaves over in Babylon. Now, Pastor, looking like, oh, okay. Oh, oh, God told you that, huh? God just went from the whole name. Now, all of a sudden, God talking directly about me. Okay, let's see how Pastor deal with it. <clears throat> and thou shalt come to Babylon, and thou there thou shalt die, and shalt be buried there, thou and all thy friends to whom thou hast prophesied lies. <clears throat> how, how it feel? How do you think it feels for somebody to talk to you like that? When you got authority, you the man. You can have this boy knocked off right now. No problems. Right? How do you think it feels for somebody to talk to you like that? I don't feel good. Nobody want to sit here and listen to nobody talk to them like that. That's how it feels. That's the type of stuff we going to have to deal with in real life. And now we going to have to be in position that our emotions aside, is this real or is this fake? Pastor couldn't do that. He couldn't set his emotions aside. He looking like, how dare you talk to me like that? Do you know I'm the governor? I'm the chief governor. I'm the I'm the head honcho here. And you talking to me like this? Let's see. Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me. And I was deceived. Look, this is Jeremiah talking. Right? Pasher, he dealt with him, right? So now Jeremiah is talking. He talk, he crying out to God now. Watch what he say. Oh Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I and hast prevailed. I am in the derision daily, everyone that mocks me. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of Yahuwah was made a reproach unto me in the derision daily. Right? So and listen, said, he started off by saying, Yah, you deceived me. You stronger than me. I've been, you've been making me cry out all these words. 
Watch, he's about to describe what's been happening to him as a result of him speaking God's word. Keep going. And I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name. <laughs> like he's saying, listen, I'm done talking about God. That's what he's saying right now. He's saying, listen, I said to myself, I am done talking about God. Because guess what? Every time I open myself, somebody punching me in my face because I'm talking to him about God. He's like, this is not what I signed up for. He said, I'm done talking about God. It, ain't, it don't make no sense. I'm done with this. Watch what he said. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. And I was weary said, with man, the listen, That thing was in me, though. He's like, man, I didn't want to talk about it, but it's just like, mm. it's like a burning fire inside of me. I got to let it out. Right? That's what he's saying. I got to let this thing out. So Jeremiah's in there burning, it's eating them up. He's seeing all this wild stuff going on around him. And the most I got giving him these words like, yo, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And he see these people walking around. It's just like us when we start to know the word, when we start to know what's right and what's wrong. And you see these people walking around. Like I'll be talking about these Christians or I'll be talking about the, the Hebrew Israelites or these Muslims because the, I, they, in their mind, they think they know something. But I got the actual word and I understand it. And I'll be looking at them like, it would be burning me up. Like, no, you're, you're wrong about everything you're saying. Right? Be burning up. And I got I to gotta shut up sometimes. Like, oh, man, I ain't about to. What I'm going to say something for? Because all these boys going to do is that I got some of these people, they in my comments. They be talking about me, talking about my, the way I talk, talking about how I stutter. They be talking they be talking about bad. Some of the stuff be funny, too. You know what I'm saying? But they be talking about me bad. It's like, man, you know what? I ain't even going to mess with these boys because of X, Y, and Z. I didn't look up people. Some of these people got online, found my wife page, tried to talk about her. Right? And he's like, oh, man, you know what? I don't even want to deal with this stuff, this, that, another. But then I think back. I'm like, well, Jeremiah used to get punched in the face. All I got to do is deal with somebody sending me a tweet? <clears throat> man, please. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you what this word say. You know what I'm saying? Let me tell you what this word say. Them boys were built for it. I think I'm built for it a little bit, too. Maybe not like Jeremiah, because I don't know somebody punched me in the face. You know what I'm saying? That might be the test. That, you know what I'm saying? But, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But listen, I can deal with a tweet. I can do and I can shoot some jokes. You know what I'm saying? So what, what we got? Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Let me find your wife too, boy. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Right? Let me see. Keep going. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Reports say they and we will report it. All my familiars watch for my hate halting, saying, for adventure, he will be enticed, and we shall prevail against him, and we shall take our revenge on him. But Yahuwah is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. Mm -hmm. But, O Lord of hosts, that triest the righteous, and seest the reins of the heart, mm -hmm. seest the reins and the heart, let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto look, thee he said, I look, he said, oh, Yahuwah, who tries the reins and see it. What did he say? See the what? In, in the heart. Right? He said, oh, Yahuwah, let me see your vengeance on these people. Get it. In other words, get these folks for me. I can't, look, I can't throw hands. I can't throw hands with, uh, with, uh, Passat. What's his name? Pasher. Pasher. Right? I can't throw hands with him. But you can get him for me, God. So that's what he's asking for. He's praying to God. Remember I told y'all sometimes we be too pretty in our prayers? We be praying and we be sitting here Oh, but God, just, you know, give me the heart to forgive everyone, Lord, because uh, I want you to give me a peaceful heart. And it's another. But that's not what we feel. And what we feel in our heart, like for real, what we feel it's like, man, I don't like that he talked to me that way. I don't like that she talked to me that way. I don't like that they can get away with doing that to me. They just cheated me out of a whole job. I don't like that. And I feel like they should have to pay for it. I don't feel like a person should get away with doing something like that. That's how we really feel. And when you private and you praying to the most high God, I understand when you're in front of people, you don't want to give off the wrong. I get it. I understand that. We shouldn't give off the wrong impression. But you ain't hide nothing from God. When you praying privately to the most high God, man, you better pray how you feel. Like, I don't feel like that's right, God. And if it was me, and if I was God, I'd send a lightning bolt right now. I'm just saying that that was me. That's how I'd be praying. Y'all think I'm joking. I'd be praying like, honestly, most like God, it's your will. But that was wrong. What they did was wrong. 
And I've been trying to be right for a lot of my life now. And I know I didn't did some messed up stuff too. But what they did to me is wrong. And I ain't going to do nothing back to them. But you got to get them. Give me something. Give me something to keep me going because I'm furious right now. I can't believe this man did this to me. Right? I'm furious right now. Give me something to keep me calm. And sometimes something happens. Sometimes something don't. Right? Either way, I got to maintain my righteousness. But I ain't about to hear him pretend what God, oh, God will just give me the strength to forgive. No, I, don't. I forgive him. But, you know what I'm saying? You do what you got to do. You know what I'm saying? Do something to him because somebody got to do something to him. It ain't fair that he get, get away with X, Y, and Z. Right? That's how Jeremiah talking right now. He like, listen, I get it. I understand God. You don't want to try the reins now. Go ahead and let me see some vengeance. Let me see something happen to these folks. Right? Let me see. Keep going. My boys here. Oh, we going down. Don't come up here making no noise. What up, boy? Don't come up here making a whole bunch of noise. Keep going. But Yahuwah is with me as a mighty, terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble. And they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their mm -hmm. everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. But O Yahuwah of hosts that tries the righteous and sees the reins in the heart. Hello. Let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee have I opened my cause. Sing he said, unto look, Yahuwah. unto thee have I opened my cause. Keep going. Sing unto Yahuwah. Praise ye Yahuwah. For he hath delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. First be the day where I was born. Let not He said, do what now? First be the day where I was born. This how he thinking right now. You know, we've got, oh God, I know. You know, I know I've been through a lot, Lord, but you woke me up this morning. So I know that was a blessing. That's my blessing. That's how we be praying. Right? That's not the prayer of a righteous man. A righteous man saying, man, curse the day I was born. What's the same as saying curse the day I was born? Like, What's yeah. another way to say that? What's a, how, how might somebody say something like that now? It's like death is better than this. I wish I was never born. I wish I was never here. Right? Remember, curse means you devoted to destruction. So the day I was born is dead. Right. I wish the day that I was born didn't exist. Some uh, that's a person saying, I'd rather be dead. I'd rather not be here. Some people. Uh, right. Some people use this as a uh, some people use this as an ex as the doctor to say that celebrating birthdays is bad or, you know what I'm saying? Like it's evil to celebrate birthdays. They use that. Yeah. These, people, these people go through. Look, they go through the book and find everything except what the most high God trying to teach. them. Yeah, that thing crazy. That thing is crazy to me. I think it was no, a this, is a, this is a righteous man trying to tell you that with what I'm going through right now, the way these people punching me in my face and put me in jail just because I'm trying to teach people the right stuff, I'd rather not be here. Right? I'd rather not be here. This is no different from a lot of the people that we live with every day that would rather not be here. The only difference is the reasoning. Jeremiah's reason for not wanting to be here is not because he got a behavior that he's not proud of. Right. Jeremiah's reason for not wanting to be here is because he feels like he's doing the right thing. He feels like he's doing something for the most high God. <coughs> and he, the results he's getting is that as that is as if he's king enemy number one, like like everybody is trying to like everybody is trying to get him. And so Donald he's looking Trump. at it like this is not huh? That, that Donald Trump. <laughs> no, no, no. Trump 20, 2020 photo for sure. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna call him Jeremiah now, but you know what I'm saying? But he gonna, you know what I'm saying? Y'all better leave Big, Big T alone. I don't know why they trying to put my man in jail. They put him in the stocks and punched him in the face. You know what I'm saying? But no, but if you look at it, this is depression. Right? This is it. That's what he's dealing with right now. This is what we would call it. Right? We didn't have all the fancy words to describe this stuff, you know what I'm saying, way back when. So we just dealt with it. Now, people, look, I read, a, uh, I read two articles. I happened upon one article that said the numbers of people seeking mental health services have doubled since 20 years ago. Right? That's one. Then I read another one that said suicides are higher than they have ever been in history. 
in almost every age group. Oh, no, there he is. Listen, ain't nobody got no time for you right now. You know all these kids, all these people out here that, that's going through it mentally? Ain't nobody got time for you right now. And it's big money, too. Big money. Like, boom, 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 boom. So now you got to worry about, did somebody, if you, if you Google right now, like you about to go to college, you know what I'm saying, a little bit, you might be thinking about college and all that stuff. Then you're going to Google. You're gonna, you know what you want to, you want you know what you want to be. You want you know what I'm saying. What you want to go to college for? For business. You know what I'm saying. So how you come up with that? Yeah. So you looking at it, and you looking like you know what type of business you want to open. So at some point you're gonna be like, okay, what do I want my first business to be? Right. You are gonna ask yourself that question, and then people you gonna talk to some people and they are gonna be like, okay, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. They're going to tell you to start looking at what do you think the world needs next? Because you're you, you the person creating the business, right? So they're going to say, what do you think the world needs back? So you're going to start Googling. Well, the same people do that for careers, right? When they look at, like, what career I want to go into, right? Do I want to be an entrepreneur, like I'm saying? Or do I want to go into a career, right? And the people who decide that they want to go into a career, they're going to say, hmm, who, everybody do it. What are the salaries like? You know what I'm saying? So you start looking at salaries. So what happens is because there's such a demand, every, the whole world is supply and demand. Because of all of the mental illness, there's such a demand of people needing mental services, right? What happens is now we got to pay mental people. We got to pay the mental health people. We got to pay the therapists, the counselors. We got to pay the uh, psychiatrists. We got to pay the psychologists. We got to pay the, what's the other one? Psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, counselors, right? We got to pay all of them. So now you see those salaries start to go up because there's such a high demand in these fields, right? So now you got to ask yourself, did somebody pick this career just because they Googled how much do therapists make? Or is this something they really care about and are passionate about? Because remember, this person will have your mental state in their hands. Right? You kind of want to know if this person is just writing it and they just doodling that book. Like, they drawing, they drawing Goku. You know what I'm saying? And then you telling them, you telling them about you, you about to off yourself. And they drawing Goku like, tell me more. Oh, oh, you have to think about that differently are you using the tools that we talked about last week you know what i'm saying that's how they look at stuff they on their computer typing up you think in your mind they write deep notes about what you oh they really they really analyzing me in your mind that's what you think is happening they are sitting there analyzing me they giving me all the they over there they playing you know what i'm saying what's the what's the game that everybody monopoly that's the game that everybody playing right now they playing monopoly with their friend you know what i'm saying sitting there Oh, really? Oh, yeah. That's a very traumatizing experience. Tell me more about it. Yes. Huh? What'd you say, sir? Uh, uh, nothing. I, uh, I, I, yes, that is the right way to think about it. You know what I'm saying? They sitting there, you sitting there like, I don't really know if you care. All I know is I need help because I'm going through something. Well, Jeremiah was going through something. Who he turned to? Most high God. Right? And I know how that sound. I get it, man. I get it. Because, you know, when you when you somewhere mentally, the first thing you want to tell yourself is, man, ain't nobody been through it like I've been through it. First thing you want to do is isolate yourself. You want to make your situation different from everybody else's situation. Right? But what does the Most High God tell us? Who remembers? What does he tell us about everything that we got to overcome? <laughs> said uh, that what do you say there's no situation overtaking you that's uh, uncommon to man i'm paraphrasing he said there is no temptation that can overcome you that is uncommon to man but yah is faithful in that in every situation he give you a way of escape so you know what that means anything that caused you to sin anything that happened that be like and tempt you to sin somebody else has beat it there's somebody who looked at that and was like no, I don't, I don't do drugs. There's somebody like, no, 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 I'm not having sex until I get married. 
There's somebody like, no, 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 no. I'm not about to get drunk tonight. Right? Whatever one you think of, there's somebody that was like, no, nah, I'm good. I've overcome that already. So then we can't lie to ourselves and tell us nobody has been through. That ain't what the book says. So that means you don't believe the book. That's cool if you don't believe the book. But say that to yourself. Don't put yourself in a position like, no, I believe everything. The word is true and this, that, and other, knowing you don't believe it. Because now you're just confusing you. That's what mental illness come from. Lying to yourself. You can't lie to yourself. They're too... Over and over again. And you know why somebody can do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result? Because they lie to themselves and say, no, nah, it's going to be different this time. No, nah, I'm going to make this work. It's going to be different. That's insane. That's crazy. <laughs> you got to be able to assess reality in real life. And there's two sides of it too, right? Because some people, they overhype themselves and they set their expectations real hard, high because that's how they function. They high performer. So they say, you know what? Things are going to be great today. This is the, this is the positive affirmation people. This is going to be a great day. Things are going to be great. I'm going to go. I'm going to have talk to my boss. My boss is going to love everything I say. We're going to do a great job. You look beautiful today. Everything, right? And say all these things. And then they keep on not hitting their expectations. But you know what? They get up every day. Nope. They have to explain that. Your brain has to rationalize. All the times that you don't hit, have the, the correct expectation. It has to. You know what I'm saying? So your brain be sitting there like, well, that only happened because they got into the way. Or because this person didn't help me. So that's the people who got, got those high expectations like that. Those are the people that have zero accountability. It's always somebody else's fault. Oh, but, they, but I could have done it if they didn't do it. Because they have to do that in order to keep their expectations high. To keep their drive going. Because otherwise, if they don't have drive, they're scared of what might happen if they lose their drive. But then you got the opposite. You got the people that, that they purposely put their expectations lower than their reality. Right? They, they know they so scared of not hitting an expectation. They so scared of something not working out the way that they expected. They always push their expectations low. Right? And they tell themselves, it's not going to work anyway. No, nah, it never works out for me. That's the negative folks, right? That's the ones that, like, even when something good about to happen, mm, I'm going to find a way to mess it up. Right? Because I'm more comfortable dealing with a low expectation than having a high expectation that I really have and then not meeting it. So they try to manage it that way. It's two different people. And we just manage, we manage ourselves a different way. Each of those can cause mental, mental health because it's the distance between your expectation and reality, whether it's a positive expectation or a negative expectation. The distance between that is where depression lives. Right. Depression lives in the fact that reality says you should be here. But I, I say I'm going to be a celebrity in two years if I just keep making these TikTok videos. Right. So you put yourself way up here. And that's where your depression going to live, right in between, right? Or the person say, you know what? I'm not going to be anything. Nothing ever works out for me. But that's not the reality. A lot of things work out for you. Guess what? Your depression live right in between there. That's how it works, right? So then you got to ask yourself, how do you want to live? If you're going to be depressed, how do you want to do Because I'm not going to say a person that live for the most high God is going to be any different. Where do you think our expectations are? We got high expectations. Most high God, I serve the most high God. Oh, please. Can't nobody do nothing to me. The books say all things work out for the good. You know what I'm saying? That's how we look at stuff, right? So guess what? Car break down. <laughs> I just, what? Lord, I've been doing the right thing. I've been doing this. I've really been trying to get my life together. How in the world is this? My kids mess, uh, acting up. Oh my goodness. I've been trying. I've been reading every day. I've been trying to do that. I've been trying to, and this still is happening to me. What do you think that do to you? Because God got our expectations up here, but the reality is right here. Nobody's exempt. Don't think when I'm telling you, talk to God. Don't think I'm telling you that, oh, if you just obey God, everything will be hunky dory. That's a lie. 
Because we, we started off reading Jeremiah, who got a direct communication with the Most High God. And guess what? He said, man, I wish I was never born. I wish I wasn't even here. But it's two ways you could be depressed. And it's going to take you two different places. Grab, uh, grab 2 Corinthians chapter 7 real quick. <laughs> Mm -hmm. This is uh chapter seven, second uh second Corinthians chapter seven. <laughs> Give me verse uh what verse I want. Give me verse eight. It's second Corinthians chapter seven, verse eight. Baby, you want to do me a favor? Give me a little water. A little water. Oh, here you go. What are you about to give me? Okay, now that'll work. I'll take that. Is it poor people water? Goodness gracious. <laughs> this second Corinthians chapter. For though seven. I made you sorry. Go for ahead. though I made you sorry with the letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle had made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice not that look, you were when, made look, sorry. I want y'all to understand what he's saying. He's saying. I didn't say some stuff to you that hurt your feelings. And and I'm do not take this as saying, oh, it's cool to keep it real with people, even if it hurt their feelings. That's not what Paul is saying either, right? But he's saying, I've criticized you. I've accused you of sin, right? In the first letter that he wrote to him, he accused some folks of sin and he told them how to deal with that sin. And people were offended that he was associating them with that sin. So he's saying, I know I caused you sorrow with my letter. So in other words, I know I said some things to you that didn't rub you the right way. Right? But watch this. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. Right? Mm -hmm. He said, now look, I'm happy not that you was made sorry. I don't want you to feel bad. Right? He said, that's not why I'm happy. But I am happy that you were sorrowful to repentance. In other words, that you were sorrowful to the point that you changed your behavior. Right? Keep going. Watch this. For you were made sorry after a godly manner that you might receive damage by us in nothing. Right? He said, because you receive sorrow in a godly manner, right? There's no damage. I didn't, I didn't hurt you. Keep going, watch. That you might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Right? Sorrow if you have godly sorrow, in other words, when you depressed, when you sad, if you take it to the most high God and you let that encourage you into changing your behavior, to strengthening your faith, that leads you to repentance, which leads you to salvation. From that, there is nothing to regret. If I make you, if I say something to my wife and it calls her to be like, what? I understand the Bible more than you. You know what I'm saying? That's not nothing I should feel bad about. When it's all said and done, I don't want her to feel, I don't want her to feel bad. I don't want her to be sorrowful. I don't want her to be depressed. But let me tell you something. If it turn into somebody being righteous, everybody got to be happy at the end. Right? A lot of people will take this and they will make it, let me say, mean things to a person with the intentions that it will. That's not what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, if I stand on the word, and say the word exactly how it is and handle the word the way it's supposed to be handled. I don't have to be afraid that somebody's feelings gets hurt. Right? That's why y'all see, no matter who come in, they white, they black, you know what I'm saying? They male, they female, they married, they unmarried, they married again, all this. It don't change what we preach. It's not. Now, certainly, people have sat here and had their feelings hurt by some of the stuff we talk. But it's the same thing I would teach if they wasn't here. Right. That's just what the word does. It's not about trying to be mean to nobody or nothing like that. This is about what the word is saying. You got to be able to stand on the word. And if the word touch somebody and it make them feel sorrowful, man, they can deal with that thing in two ways. One way is the godly sorrow. That's going to lead them to salvation. Right. Keep going. For godly sorrow works repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. Uh -huh. but the sorrow of the world worketh death. <clears throat> The sorrow of the world work is what? Death. So when Judas, right? Y'all remember Judas, right? 
Remember he kissed Yahushua? Sure? You know what I'm saying? Sold him out. He told it. He told him. He was like, listen. It's like it's like telling the police. He's like, he telling him, he was like, listen, the one I kiss, that's him. So he kissed and he came up. That's my man. You know what I'm saying? This, that, another. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy to us today. We wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody gonna be kissing. But in our culture, because it wasn't a we like that today, because everybody gay. You know what I'm saying? So all these people would be funny bunny and all this stuff. So now we gotta protect ourselves. Like, I ain't about to be vulnerable like that to somebody who might be trying to, you know what I mean? So, like, no, we ain't we not doing that. Back in up, we wasn't funny bunny like that in our lane. You know what I'm saying? So we could be more vulnerable to our brother at that point because we didn't have a risk of somebody trying to take advantage of us. Right? So we look, you know what I'm saying? We, you know what I'm saying? You kiss him. Mm, that's him. Okay, that's him. That's the one right there. Yahushua, sure, that's him. Get him. Then they gaffled Yahushua sure up because they didn't know what he looked like. They gaffled him up. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Put him in there. Put him in jail. Smacked him up just like they were doing Jeremiah. Right? And in Judah's mind, he was looking at it like, nah, I know my man Yahushua. Sure. That's the most righteous man I know. They can't, they ain't got no evidence on him. I know they want to get him. I know they want to put him in jail. I know they want to put him to death, but there's no way they're going to be able to do it because he's never done anything wrong. I've been around this man for years and he's never done a thing wrong. In his mind, y'all going to pay me to point him out. Well, give me the money. He going to beat the case and we all win. That's how he's thinking about it, right? Then what happened? The gaffle of y'all sure. They find somebody to tell some stuff on them that's not true, and then they kill him. They well, they 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 sentence him to death. And when Judas heard that they sentenced him to death, how you think that made him feel? That boy tried to get the money back. He <clears throat> had expectations of I'm my man gonna beat the case, and I'm gonna get the money. But when that came crumbling down, and he had to deal with this reality down here, oh crushed him he said no 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 no. i don't want this money take it back guess what they said it's like nah it's blood on that money you know what i'm saying we can't take that back to the temple you put that in the temple then he fell back you know what he did to himself what did he do to himself t he hung himself he hung himself killed himself like they can't, right? they can't they can't put blood money in a temple but they can falsely accuse somebody to death though <laughs> that's the way that's the way our people brain work you know what i'm saying try to find a loophole we stand strong on some stuff you know what i'm saying the other stuff it's just like oh i ain't a big deal but that's what happens that's what depression to do what we call depression that's what it do we didn't call it depression back then but we would call this stuff depression judas would have been depressed in our book but he would be depressed or sorrowful according to the worldly sorrow that's why it led to his death. Whereas Jeremiah, although when he prayed, he said, man, I wish I was never born being vulnerable to the most high God. But instead of leading it to his death, it led him to better works, to better behavior, to more righteousness, to being a man of the most high God that all of us read about today now. Right. That's the difference in how we can handle it. And they do this without the understanding that we got. Right. We got a different understanding. Like we kind of we kind of know kind of how this stuff play out because we got Paul. to explain. Keep reading Paul. Watch this. Paul. Paul kind of will explain some of this stuff to us. For behold, the selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. Yeah. He said, what carefulness did it wrought? In other words, now now you paying attention to your moves. He said he said, because I accuse you of that sin. You were looking like, man, you know what I'm saying? You put me on blast like that, this, that, and other, man. I can't believe you did that. I ain't going to never let you catch me like that again. I ain't going to never look stupid in front of these people again. I ain't going to never make that mistake again. So he's looking at it like, oh, what carefulness did that? Now you care about what you do. Now you're paying attention to stuff you're saying. Right? Watch this. Keep going. What clearing of yourselves? Yay. What indignation? Yay. What when he say what clearing of himself, he's he saying, I'm trying to make sure you know that I'm not guilty. He said, what indignation? I'm furious about it. I care about it. I'm I'm on fire. I want you to know I'm good. I'm a changed person now. And I'm mad. Right? Keep going. Yeah, what fear? What vehement desire? Yeah, mm-hmm. what zeal? What revenge? And all things what you revenge, have to right? to be clear in this matter. <clears throat> that, what Paul is saying, that's a that's a that's an expected result. That's the result that we're looking for, right? Who we got? Grab uh, Ephesians. Grab Ephesians chapter four, verse twenty-five. 
We got we still got a lot to cover. It's Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. This is good because we just don't under the problem is we don't understand what we're dealing with. There's so much that goes into how we feel. And we end up letting how we feel run us. How we feel ends up making the decisions for us. And that can't be for us. We got to be bigger than how we feel. Right? How we feel got to bow down to the most high God. We can't be walking around, man, you know what I'm saying? That's just how I felt. You know what I'm saying? I did it because that's just how I felt. No, that's crazy. That don't make no darn sense. You know what I'm saying? That don't make no darn sense. It's Ephesians chapter 4. Give me verse 25. Watch what the book say. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor. For Look, he said, look, put away lying, all that lying that you're doing. That includes yourself? Let me tell you something. I said, and I think I said this maybe last week or the week before. You know what I'm saying? It's, look, it's bad if you lie to somebody. That's bad. Right? It is horrible. Right? If you believe somebody else lie. Horrible. But when you believe your own lie, there's no coming back from that. Right? There's nothing that you could do if you believe too many of your own lie. Right? You can tell somebody else a lie. And not believe your own lies and be like, okay, you can you can navigate through that one day. Right? You can get to a place where you can be like, okay, let me let me clean all this up. I'm making a mess. Right? And you could believe somebody else lie and be like, for real, that's how it works. And then somebody else can come one day and be like, that's not how it works. He lied to you. You can come out of that. But when you start believing yourself and you lying to yourself, that's it. Nobody can save you from that. Nobody can save you from you lying to yourself. Right? So when the book say putting away them lies, he talking about lying to yourself too, right? So read it again. He said, put away lies. Wherefore, putting away lying, <clears throat> speak every man truth with his neighbor, for mm -hmm. we are members one of another. Be ye anger, be ye angry and sin not. He Let said, not be ye angry and sin not. Anger is what? An emotion. Anger is an emotion, right? So, anger is something that you feel. So, if you feel angry, but you don't sin, what are you? Are you really angry? Or are you your behavior? You your behavior. But what it look like when you mad? You specifically, when you get mad, what it look like? You cry when you mad. Sometimes you be like, ah! right? So we looking at you, and because we know you and you crying, you know what? We gonna be like, he just mad, right? We say that's who you are. Are we saying that because of how you feel, or are we saying that because of what we see? Because of what we see. Now, if you were the same angry, but you said. I ain't even about to cry. I'm just going to keep my face straight. And I'm just going to stand here. I ain't going to let nobody see it. I ain't going to let nobody know. Matter of fact, I'm going to put a smile on my face. What are people going to say? Like, wow, that's a happy kid. I thought that would make him angry. Because we're not what we feel. We are what we are. We are what we do. A lot of times we get caught and we feel like we fake. I'm mad right now. So I got to tell this person how mad I am. I'm mad. So if I sit here and smile in this person's face right now, I feel fake. I ain't about to be faking these people's face. That ain't that what we, we be talking. Look, we be going to work. I ain't about to be faking these white people's face. Dun, 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 dun. You know why? Because in our mind, how I feel is really me. And as soon as you get to thinking like that, Something is running you that you don't have control over. And we're going to talk about what that is, what that something is, right? But you've now lost control of yourself. As soon as you get to thinking that how you feel is really you, right? 
You get to letting that stuff boil up in you, and then you react and do whatever it tells you to do, right? Now you're no longer under control. Whereas you can handle that a little differently. These white folks at my job don't deserve to know what's on my mind. <clears throat> what have they done to deserve to know what's in your thoughts? Yo, th you know how intimate your thoughts are? Please, people can't get my thoughts out of me. They be looking at me. What do you think about that, Phil? Uh -huh. Whatever you guys think. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's my thought. Like, what do you, why do you feel like you deserve everything that's on my mind? Why I got to tell you how I feel about you? There ain't none of your business how I feel about you. The only thing you need to know is I'm going to respect you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to treat you right, and I'm going to do my job. It ain't none of your business how I, what I think of you, what I think you about to do, or how I think you live outside of work, or the, the type of performance you have. I don't care. That, that, listen, you, that's your stuff. You need to know. This is, these are my thoughts, and these are precious to me. If I share, listen, for any of if I share my life and my thoughts with you, that means you special. I care. Because don't nobody know my stuff. Don't nobody know my... I keep it all. All that stuff is precious to me. That's crazy. I didn't used to be like that, though. No, because I was real. You know what I'm saying? I was real. No, oh, no, no. This is what I'm thinking. No, but you a sucker. This, that, and the other. I think you do X, Y, and Z. I got to tell you. Because I'm fake if I ain't telling you. How much, how much trouble you think that got me in? I nobody got time for that stuff. Any people going to use anything you say against you into when, it's, when it's they time to anyway? Well, I'm going to give you all my thoughts. That's mine. So that's what the book means when it say be angry but sin not. That's all right. You feel it. The feeling is a feeling. You're going to feel it. You can't get around the feeling. The feeling is there. You're going to feel it. That's all right. Contain your behavior. Don't react. Don't let the anger lead you. Watch. He's going to keep going. Watch this. Keep going. <coughs> Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him mm -hmm. that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands in a thing which is good, that he may give, that he may have to give to him that need. Mm -hmm. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may right. He said, "Don't let any corrupt word. communication come out of your mouth." In other words, don't be out there cussing, lying, cheating. You know what I'm saying? Trying to hurt people's feelings. None of that stuff. He said, only do stuff that'll build people up. If you saying something, say it with the intention to look, I'm trying to help you out right now. I'm trying to build you up. I'm trying to make you stronger. I'm trying to make you better. Right? Keep going. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Mm -hmm. Let us all, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you. With all Look, let all bitterness, emotion, right, and wrath, emotion, right, and clamoring, emotion, and evil speaking, that's hating, emotion, right, all that stuff. He said, let be done with all that stuff. Because that stuff is going to lead to behaviors. You got to nip that stuff in the bud. As soon as you feel it, be like, I feel that. I acknowledge that I feel that. I do. But guess what? That's not me. That's not going to run how I act. That's not going to determine my behavior. Keep going. Watch this. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for the Messiah's sake, has forgiven you. So now, although Pasher punched my man in the face, Jeremiah still got to stand there and be like, this is what the Most High God said. He can't get back. He can't do nothing. And when he feel it, guess what he got to do? Most high God, go get him. Go get him. I want to see your vengeance on these people. That's how he handle it. When he in front of him, though, he got to hold the line. He got to obey the most high God at all costs, no matter what come with it. He got to take it. He got to eat it. Then he got to cry about it later. Like, man, I wish I was never born. Because he punched me in my little face. And you let him go. You let him right in my face. Right? He cried about it. Then you got to wipe it darn tear, get back out there. Thus says Yahuwah. Every day for somebody else to punch him in the face or for him to go to jail again. No, we're going to read about Jeremiah. It's a couple times. <laughs> they didn't punch him a couple times. Because that's what happens. That's what they got to deal with as a prophet. Man, the stuff we dealing with ain't nothing. We be crying about little stuff. 
we ain't dealing with none of the stuff these people deal with. Our prophets, we ain't dealing with none of the stuff that they dealt with. We dealing with stuff that come from our decisions. We dealing with stuff that come from our past. A lot of stuff that we deal with, it come from our past. Stuff that we didn't got away with. Stuff that we, a life that we live, and now we trying to ease out of it, be like, you know what, I'm about to change my life right now. And guess what? Most High God said, yeah, it's all going to come back to our kids. It happened to every one of us. It ain't no way you can get around it. That's how it happened. So now we got to refocus ourselves and got to look at it and say, you know what? That's all right. Par for the course. Like Paul, do y'all remember Paul? Paul's like, man, Most High God gave me a thorn in my darn side. And I kept praying that, like, look, just take it away, take it away. And you know what the Most High God said to him? My grace is sufficient. Most High God, he, that's a bad man. That boy don't be saying nothing that, that you want to hear. He tell you, look, imagine crying to him. Look, Most High God, I've been, look, I've been trying to do this right. I've been taking care of your people. This is Paul we talking about. I've been teaching all these Gentiles for you. I've been, I've been doing it for you. Most High God say, nah, you good. I ain't changing nothing. What I get, look, what you dealing with is the light version. That's the grace. You think it's rough? My grace is sufficient, boy. Shut up. Now we got to refocus ourselves because you know when the Most High God says that to you, guess what he's doing? Our expectations is here, right? When he say that to you, what do you think that's doing? This is reality. Because I know if you stay here, what's about to happen to you, you're going to crash out. Your depression going to be right here, right? Mm, let me bring you back down. Let me help you understand. What you're dealing with is the light version, right? I'm doing that because I have, I'm having mercy, mercy on you. That thorn in your side, this is the mercy. Well, that changes how you look at it. That is the effect of taking it to God and reading this word and managing your, your, you manage your expectations through your behavior. Because now you can realign yourself with reality. And that is the fight that we got. That the fight we got is keeping ourselves here, not way up here, not way up here. Our expectation is going to be real high because of this word. Or it's going to be real low. Somebody, some people are going to make it low, right? Some people make it low when they say, oh, you know, God blessed me today by waking me up this morning. That's low expectation. They saying that the, all the power of God, all it is is waking them up. That's low expectation. You know, oh, I have miracles every day. Every day you wake up is a miracle. Low expectations, right? They depression going to be right there. Don't worry about it. It's there right there too, right? We got to keep it right here. And that's, it's, it's a fight. It's hard. Right. You got to do it. But it constantly takes you reminding yourself of what's really going on. What does the real world world look like versus what does the book say and managing your behavior and your expectations that way you do that. You'll be clean. Right. Because the stuff that's leading us is not like we call it emotions. The book will call the spirits. Grab Ecclesiastes for me. Ecclesiastes real quick. Ecclesiastes chapter seven. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, uh, give me verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. Give me. <laughs> this is Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. Then after that, we're going to grab uh, 1 Samuel. But first, let's do Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 9. I just want to show y'all something real quick. Because a lot of people don't know this. A lot of this stuff is not taught. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger is Be not hasty in thy what? Spirit to be angry. Be not hasty in thy spirit. Spirit to be angry. So what do you think anger is? Think it's bad? Okay. Grab uh first uh first Samuel chapter uh one verse first Samuel chapter one verse fifteen. This first Corinthians, I mean, uh, first Samuel chapter one, verse 15. 
And Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful, sorrowful spirit. I of a what? Of a sorrowful, sorrowful spirit. A sorrowful spirit. In other words, a sad spirit. What do you think being sad is? Emotion. The spirit. All these things that we're dealing with are spirits. So what's happening is we letting spirits lead us when we being real. When we not being fake in these people's face. When I'm just going to tell them how I feel. When I'm speaking my truth. A spirit is ruling me. A bunch of spirits be ruling us. Right? When you telling people what's on your mind, that's a, you telling them your spirits. So that's why the most high God is telling you all this stuff got to come into submission to him. These are spirits. And when we when we play around with ourselves, like when we let's say we get drunk, when you go when you go to the store to buy alcohol, a lot of these stores got what on the front of them. They say wine and spirits, don't it? Because this stuff, this stuff is not it's new to us and understand it this way. It's not new in the ancient world. Right. We knew that if we got drunk and we drunk too much wine then we're interacting with spirits at that point. That's why the book tells us not to get drunk. Right? The same thing with this medication. Sister Danielle was telling us, they put her on medication, they, got, they give us all this medication. Well, guess what? What do you think that's doing? When you pop that pill, what do you think it's doing? It's interacting with you in a way that opens you up to spirits. That's why you get super docile. Your brain don't even work. You ain't even got the energy to even think a different way. You just say, okay. And you just start accepting everything. Like, okay. Because now what it's done is it's forced your expectations to go here. Because you can't, you can't manage your own expectations of what the assumption is. So they say, you know what? Let me help you out. Do. And then it forces it down here. Right? You're interacting with spirits. Now, is it a sin to, 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 to feel angry? No. That's why the man said, be angry, sin not. That's still a spirit. Is it a sin to take medication? No, not necessarily. Right? As long as you're not abusing it. The medication itself is the intention of the medication is to buy you time. Right? To buy you time because you might be in a dire situation where, listen, I'm at the point of my depression where it's over. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to end it all. It's over. So if you got to make a choice of I got to try to get through this person, explain to them how to manage it, but they ain't got time to hear me, hear me out for all that. Well, then, yeah, a person might take some medicine. But what happens is people stop at the medicine as if that's the cure. That's just buying you time. Right? That buy you time. And if you use that as the permanent fix, now your expectations are getting further and further away from reality. So now you become addicted to these pills. You become addicted to this alcohol because if alcohol manage your expectations in a certain way. But every time you get sober, now you got to deal with reality. I mean, your, your depression right here. Right. So if you don't break yourself away from these things, eventually the drugs and the, you have to take more. I got to smoke more weed now. Right. I started up. Look, when I first started, when I first started smoking, it used to be the little, you know what I'm saying? A little tiny. You remember the little tiny, little tiny roll that thing up. It'd be tiny like this. You hold it. And you Every, look, people be smoking now just no oh, bro you know what I'm saying and just keep going you know what I'm saying back in the day you smoke it wasn't all the good stuff they got now you smoke <coughs> your chest hot throat all hot everything <coughs> like that you, you smoke you... alright oh, I got it give me some water you know just that another right and you get a little high and it make you feel good it's like whoo I feel good I'm high Okay, but then the next time you smoke, I want to smoke a little bit more of that joint. Now I'm graduating to blunts. Oh, now I can't do what they call the stress. You know what I'm saying? I can't do stress. They be, I don't know what they call the stress now. Back in the day, you used to call it stress. I can't do stress. I needed the, what was the popular stuff back in the day? Chronic. Huh? They call that, say, like the chronic or purple. Oh, chronic. Yeah, chronic was probably purple. 
You, you got that perp. You know what they used to call it, right? So you got they come up with all these fans. Now I don't even know what they calling this stuff now. Boo yummy yay yay yay. You buy it from darn 7-Eleven. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking like these people are crazy. But it's different now. It because it takes so much now to help you escape that reality. Because now you get further and further. When you get so far away from reality, it hurt when you get here. Right? Each time you get high, you it's like this. It's like you trying to manage yourself and you like, mm, this is reality, right? So it's like, okay, my high bring me down here and it make me think this is reality. Oh, wait, I forget this is not reality. Dang it, I got to come back here before I get all the way back. Because that this rush, when you go like that too fast, that's the fall. That's the part that make you want to kill yourself, right? So when that start happening, you like, no, 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 get high again. Then you go here. So now this is the new, the new marker that, that's like the down point. And so your range start going lower and lower. So you got to keep, you got to outpace your death. So I got to get high. Now I got to stay high every day, all day. Because if I ever come down, I'm going to have to deal with this huge fall from this high. It's a huge fall. I can't even comprehend how far away I am from reality. Right? So every time I think about it, pop the pill. Now I'm on. I'm getting high, I'm popping pills, and I'm getting drunk, all of it, because all this stuff got to make me escape, and I got to stay that way. Ain't no different. Listen, that's drugs. It's, drugs is easy. We can always pick on people that do drugs and drink. We can always pick on them. Let me give you another one. Vacations. That's the big one now. A lot of people, a lot of people looking at it like, I heard these women talking. <laughs> I heard these women talking, and they said, listen, it don't make no sense to me to go save up money and buy a house. What I prefer to do is have an apartment and be have and take a six have enough money to take a six month vacation. I said that got to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. But these are all women, and they all agree with it. Respected women, I ain't gonna call them out, right? I'm saying, but respected women, and they all agree with it. But the reason is they escaping something. There's some sort of reality that tells them six months of paradise, right? Is what I need. That's not reality. Expectation is here. So when you're on that paradise, it brings you away from dealing with all this that's down here. Ugh, I don't want to deal with it. Here my darn. Pay my darn bills. And I'm talking to this dude, and you know what I'm saying? I don't really know. I don't know if he liked me or not. He always cheating on me and this, that. Now I got this is reality. But you know what? When I go to Tulum for a week. I could just act like I ain't got no cares, no worries. I don't have to think about none of that stuff. But guess what happens when she comes back? She come back a little bit broker. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more responsibility because she got to make up for everything she did that last week. Right? And guess what? Men doing the same thing. They taking these trips and they doing their, they doing what? Men doing wild stuff when they take these trips. What I hear. They doing wild stuff when they take these trips. But it's the same thing. I'm trying to escape the reality of that I'm living in. So I got to keep doing it. I got to take a trip every month. These is some women that keep, they trading a lot to take, be able to take a trip. They letting people treat them in wild ways just so they can go to Dubai. And when they get there, they're going to have to do some wild stuff. But it's worth it if I can escape my reality. All right. That's something that we got to think about. That's something that we got to look at. Right. All this stuff all reacts the same way. Depression, sorrowful, sad, all these different things are spirits. And these spirits are leading us. But don't get it out of your mind that you are the way you feel because you're not. That is not you. Just because you feel a way, that is not you. Just because a thought come to your head, that is not you. You are the way that you behave. So now if you behave according to those thoughts, that's you. You can change you though. Right? Same thing. Same thing. Spirit of fear. The book, all over the book, it said the spirit of fear. Right? That's also a spirit. It's also an emotion. Right? That anxiety. You can manage it. I'm scared. I have to coach my boy through it all the time because he got bad anxiety. Right? And I got to coach him through it all the time. It's like, I get it. I understand. I understand. It's dark. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that ran up in our house, you feel insecure now because you feel like that could always happen. Somebody could always, every night he downstairs, he checking the door. Somebody left the door and he come back. He, 
Like he our parent. He come up here. Y'all didn't lock the door. Right? Because of his anxiety. But I got to coach him through it. I got to tell him, look, although it's, a, it's scary, although your brain is telling you the worst thing ever is about to happen, right? You got to feel that and still walk downstairs by yourself and turn on the light just so you can remind yourself, ain't nothing down. You have to do that. You have to do it. I can't go down there with you all the time. I can't walk with you. You have to, you have to accept the fact this is how I feel. And I believe down there, there's definitely a monster. And somebody's definitely going to kill me as soon as I touch the bottom of the stairs. But you know what? Seven times this week, I've walked downstairs when I felt like that with my dad. And nothing happened. There was nobody down there, no monster kid. Now I'm to the point is, I acknowledge this how I feel. But I also acknowledge that I'm always wrong. Now, I'm managing myself in reality. I feel this way. I do feel it. But guess what? I've been wrong every single time I felt this way this week. Right? My chances of being wrong again are very high because what I'm assessing is not different. I don't have any new information that would tell me maybe I'm wrong this time. It's the same point of insanity. If I keep saying every time the light's off, there must be somebody in there. And every time it's not, that's insane. Right? So now I bring myself, reality is my dad walked me down there. And he showed me it wasn't nothing in there. And I was wrong. I have, I have the same feeling this time. I'm wrong this time too. Let me prove it to myself. Boom. There's no light. I'm not how I feel. You know who I am? I'm the boy who just walked downstairs and turned on the light by itself. That's who I am. I'm not the boy who's scared of the dark. All that stuff is just, you just have to look at it and say, what is the reality? I know how I feel. That's cool. That's great. And I acknowledge it. Don't pretend like, because the reality is you feel that way. So don't pretend like you don't feel these ways. That's real, right? However, the reality is that's not how things are going to play out just because I feel that way, right? Bring yourself to where you can manage your expectations. You do that, you'll be all right. It takes time. It takes training. It's just like everything that we do. We got to refocus our starts. We have to put ourselves in the right place. But that is the only way to overcome all of this madness in the world. It's crazy out here. It's nuts out here. These people trying to throw so much stuff at our brains at one time. Man, listen, book is the only thing that's going to anchor us. We got to be able to plan ourselves in this book and what the book say and then stick with it. Right. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves lost. Let's go back and let's finish up. Uh, let's finish up uh, Jeremiah chapter 20. What verse we leave off on? 13. 13. This is Jeremiah chapter 20, verse 13. Watch what the book say. Sing unto Yahuwah. Praise ye the, praise ye the Lord. <clears throat> For he has delivered the soul of the poor from the hand of evildoers. Curse be the day where I was born. Let not mm -hmm. the day where my mother bear me be blessed. Curse be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. Right. He said, look, the man who came to my daddy and was like, yo, 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 baby coming. Blessings. He said, man, curse that man. You know what I'm saying? Let that man die. Right. Keep going. And let that man be as the cities which Yahuwah overthrew and repented not. And let him hear the cry in the morning and the shouting at noontide. Because he slew me, not from the womb, or at my mother's might have been my grave, and her womb to be always great with me. Wherefore came I forth out of the womb to see labor and sorrow, and my days should be consumed with shame. That's the end of it? Yeah. All right. So you can see how he felt. But I guarantee we pick up the next chapter. Guess what he's going to be doing? Telling the word of the most I got. Because guess what? I feel a way. It sucks. I wish I wasn't here. Curse the day that I was born. Curse the day that my mom gave birth. Curse the man that came and brought the news to my dad that I was here. You know why I curse him? Because he didn't kill me in the womb. That's what, that's what Jeremiah just said. Jeremiah said the man should have killed me. I would have preferred that the man killed me. Because you know what he said after that? He said, because after I came out, I just came into sorrow and labor. Just work and feeling bad. 
I want all y'all, because we didn't, right? We didn't read it together. I want all y'all to go and read Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you, that, that shows you what a godly depression looks like. Same thing. We're dealing with the same. Look, it's no different. Is no different. We're dealing with the same thing that the world got to deal, deal with. The only difference is that ours is managed by real reality and behavior. Now, let me just, I just want to show y'all. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1. I want y'all to read the whole book. We ain't going to read the whole thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1. Watch what the book say. Ecclesiastes is one of the books that really stuck with me for a long time. Uh, it met, it kind of I won't I won't say it messed me up, but it kind of like put a lot of stuff in perspective for me. And I was I think that was one of the books that had like the most impact on me when I started to understand the scripture. This is a uh, one chapter one, uh, chapter one verse one. Sorry, what's up? And I was kind of mad because I never heard of that book before. Before I read the Bible, and I was like, "Did they eat? Hmm? Like, you want nobody to talk about this?" <laughs> Here's Ecclesiastes one, one. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanity, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. Right. Yeah. Vanity. Think of vanity means like emptiness. Right. Emptiness. He's saying he's saying emptiness, worthlessness, worthlessness. Everything is worthless. What does that sound like? Fresh. I like the press. He opened it up like, man, none of this. All everything is meaningless is what he's saying. That's how ain't that how people start talking when they're depressed? Why am I even here? This stuff is meaningless. It's so stupid. Don't nothing mean anything. That's how he opened up the book. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Keep going. Watch this. What profit has a man have? What profit hath a man of all his labor which he takes under the sun? Mm -hmm. A man do all his work, and what's the point? That's the question that he asked. Watch this. Keep going. One generation passes away, and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. Right? He said, Look, people live, people die, new people live. Earth stay the same. What's the point? Right? That's his question. What's the point of all this? Right? Keep going. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hurries to the place where he rose. The wind goes towards the south and turneth about unto the north. It whirls, uh, whirleth around continually and the wind returns again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full unto the place from whence the rivers came, there they return again. All things are full of labor. Man right? cannot Look, utter it. He said, what? All things are full of labor. What else? Man cannot utter it. Uh-huh. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Right? So he said, listen, no matter how much you see, you're going to want to see more. No matter how much you hear, you're going to want to hear more. He said, everything is meaningless. There's no point to any of it. Now, let's fast forward. Go to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. We're going to go to the very end of the book, the last chapter, and give me the last three verses. What verse is the last three verses? Where did I start at? Uh, 12. You said what? 12. 12. This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12. Watch what the book say. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Watch this. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God so after he done, he done searched out the whole world. He he's one of the most wise people in the entire earth. If you read this whole book, he's gonna prove that to you. 
right? I'll read the whole Ecclesiastes. He's going to prove that guys, to you. Uh, if you guys remember when we was reading Kings, how the Queen of Sheba came and heard of Solomon's fame and heard of all of the wisdom that he had and the things like that. And she was like, the half wasn't even told to me about how wise he was. Um, Ecclesiastes, Songs of Solomon and Proverbs will give you a little bit of insight of, of, uh, of, of Solomon's wisdom. And that's probably not even a, a little bit of all of the stuff that he probably wrote or, or did at the time. Right. We could probably say the same thing she said. The half ain't even been told to us. Yeah. Right. But you look at it that it he searched out everything and said it's all meaningless. But at the very end, he said what? Well, the whole duty of the man, a man is to keep the commandments of Yahuwah. What that is saying is, although this stuff is depressing. Manage your behavior. That's it. Manage your behavior to the reality. If you do that, actually, he's giving you reality, right? The reason why it's depression because our expectations are high. What the book is doing is giving you reality. Like it don't mean nothing for you to live or to die. Don't mean nothing. The sun is gonna come up and down. The wind gonna blow. Everything gonna happen. He going to tell you ain't nothing new under the sun, right? So he's telling you all this stuff is meaningless. But guess what? Do what the Most High God say. Manage the behavior. It's all about your behavior. That's who you are. Right? That's who Solomon was. That's who uh, Jeremiah was. And that's who all of us are, is who we are, is how we act. Right? Change that because you have control over that. Not your emotions, not somebody else. You emotional, somebody can manipulate you. If I know every time, if I knew every time somebody called me a slob, that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a react. All right, man, we're do, look, I'm walking out of school, minding my business. The homie right next to me, but I don't know him like that. I didn't like him because he said he was from LA. So I'm like, is that another? He get into it with this other dude. Dude say, you know what I'm saying? Say whatever he say, yell it out. He talking to him the whole time. They just cussing and yelling and fighting and screaming at each other. And with me, I'm like, ain't none of my, bi I'm talking to him though. I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, you better get at it. You know what I'm saying? You better get at it. You know what I'm saying? Can nobody, I'm talk, can nobody talk to me like that? I know if he talking to me like that, I get it. But, you know, he talking to you, though. You know what I'm saying? Ain't none of my business. Right? Then he say that one magic word. Guess what? What? Now I got to get in. React. Over one word. Right? Now, what if he know if I get him to react and do such and such, he'll come across this street. And I'll kill him. Guess what he said to me? Okay, come across the street. Come on right here. Guess where I was about to go? To my man's <laughs> pulled me. He said, he said, no, no, no. He got a Trey 5-7 in the backpack. He carried it every day. Don't go. Trust me, don't go. If you're going to get him, get him right here. You know what I'm saying? Do not go across that street. Now, calm down. I said, all right, yo, Steven, you don't go either. Let's chill. We handle it a different day in a different way. But that's what happens. I can say whatever just to lure you in. You think you're doing something. I'll lure you in right where I want you. And bow, that's it. Because that's what anger does. That's what emotions do. You can manipulate people with emotions. When these girls, when these girls be out here, I don't know how it work now. But back in the day, people would have women walking on the street to attract men. So that they could pay money to be with them. Right? And there will be men that's orchestrating this whole, manipulating this whole situation. And you know what they'll do to these women? They'll tell them at first they they'll shower the women with love and attention. Never have sex with them, though. A real one, right? Wouldn't have sex with them. Right? But the woman want to so bad because she respects this man. He's so wise, right? Never deal with her. But then after he gets to know her. He start picking out all of her flaws. Oh, you ain't, baby, you don't even handle that situation right. Your brain don't work right. You ain't smart enough. You need, that's why you need me in your life. You need me, you know what I'm saying? You need me this, that, another. So he first build her up, then break her down, then build her up again, then break her down, then build her up again, then break her down until the, until the fact she don't even know. She just reacting to emotion. Because now I know when I build her up, she's happy. When she's happy, this is what I can get out of her. Okay, the happy start running out. Let me break her down again. 
put her down here. When she's sad, I know how she's going to react. She's going to do exactly what I want to do, thinking, thinking that she's not doing what I want her to do. Then when she's going to get tired of that, then I'm going to build her back up. Like, no, nah, baby, I love you the whole time. You know, this, that, another. And these, they drive these women crazy. But that's all manipulation. What you think it, what you, how you think it survives? Emotion. If any woman in that position just stop and like, listen, I am not who, how I feel. I'm how I behave. I don't care what this man say to me or how he make me feel. I know what's right and I'm going to do what's right only. What you think he going to be able to do? He going to find him another bottom girl to try to break. He got to move. Right? All this stuff is all about our behavior. And our behavior got to line up with the word of the Most High God. Right? If it do that, man, can't nobody do nothing to us. Can't nobody manipulate us. Can't nobody lie to us. Can't nobody trick us. Can't nobody do none of this stuff to us. We solid. We going to be boring. It's boring when you can't manipulate people. You know what I'm saying? That thing boring when you can't. You a manipulator and you like manipulating folks and you can't do it. Oh, man, ain't no fun. They gonna move on. That's how, you know what I'm saying? That's how the dating game be. You know what I'm saying? You out there, you single nowadays and you a man of the most high God, a woman of the most high God. Oh, that thing boring. You can't find nobody that want to deal with you. And they gonna be looking like, oh, you don't, you don't drink and you don't do that. Man, ain't boring. But guess what? That remove all the foolishness out of your way. Now, when you meet somebody, people spend, they been on dates and 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 none of them is the one, right? They got the same story as you. They ain't found the one and you ain't found the one. The only difference is you ain't wasted your time going on all these dates. You dealing with the person that's like, okay, well, the person that come to you might actually got some got some stuff because they know who you are and they know you're not for all the foolishness. Now you just weed out a whole bunch of meaningless dates. Right? That's how we got to look at it. We got to learn how to look at stuff as reality has it, as opposed to looking at it as these people would have. Right? Any questions? Any questions online? Mm, don't look like it. Hey, baby. Let me get some more of them. All right, so I'm going to give out an award. Number one student award. Goes to Abriel. You're the number one student. Because you're amazing. I don't know. I don't know. It felt like you did good. You answered questions. You paid attention the whole time. You know what I mean? That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you say you got this name figured out, huh? <laughs> All right, let's pray out.